So today I'm going to talk about the huge problem with the glycemic index. It gives you some data, and so if you're only relying on the glycemic index, you're going to set yourself up for a lot of failure because it only tells you a small part of the big picture. So the glycemic index covers a range of foods on a scale that rates a food's ability to raise your blood glucose. So on the glycemic index, a food less than 55 would be considered low. And so this is based on using 50 grams of absorbable carbs. So you're minusing the fiber. Even though that's a carb, um, it doesn't have an effect on insulin. A Twix candy bar is considered low on the glycemic index. Pizza Hut Supreme Pie is considered low on the glycemic index. Betty Crocker chocolate cake is considered low. And a 100% stone ground whole wheat bread is considered low. So right off the bat, the glycemic index is not based on real world serving size consumption. All right, the next point. People never eat just one food on the scale. For example, are you just going to eat a piece of bread? No, you're going to put something on it like peanut butter and jelly, right? Or some meat and cheese. That's number three. When you're combining protein or fat with a sugar or something that turns into sugar pretty quickly, you create something called advanced glycated end products, which is a type of protein that ends up not being used in the body, but it clogs everything up it destroys your vascular system. It destroys your vision, your circulation, your neurons in your brain. So this is just one additional negative effect of glucose when it's combined with protein or fat. All right, number four, low glycemic fructose is worse than glucose. So on the scale, at 100, which is considered high, you have glucose. And then when we get into the lower part, we have a type of sugar called fructose, which is only 19, which is very low on the glycemic index. And then if we combine fructose with glucose, we get sucrose. And that's why it's about right here. But here's the big problem. The receptors in your body for glucose are pretty much all over the body. The receptors for fructose are only in your liver. So when you consume fructose, you're creating a lot of damage to the liver because you're not able to spread out this sugar evenly throughout the body. It's more concentrated right to the liver, and so the liver has to deal with it. It gets overloaded, and that's when you start creating inflammation, additional toxic waste, a lot of free radical damage, and you create more insulin resistance, which then leads to diabetes. So fructose is actually a lot worse than glucose. And quite a few other uh, sugars have a combination of fructose and uh, glucose. Like, for example, agave nectar has a much larger uh, percentage of fructose than glucose. Even though fructose is low in the glycemic index, it actually is going to create a lot more damage relating to your blood sugars than if you were to consume glucose. And just as a side note, no one consumes straight glucose by itself. And it's pretty bizarre. If you were to get a glucose tolerance test and check your blood sugar by going to the doctor, um, they may give you a glucose drink and then check your blood sugars after you do that to determine how you react to glucose. But in real life, you're never consuming straight glucose. It's always a combination of things. And number five, the glycemic index ignores the glycemic load. The glycemic load is a much better measurement because it's looking at the glycemic index plus the amount of carbohydrates. And so you're going to get a more accurate measurement of what's happening inside. The last thing I want to mention is this thing called the insulin index. The insulin index, which I wrote about in my book, is all the non-carbohydrate foods that have effect on insulin. This is way better than the glycemic index because it looks at fat and it also looks at protein. And just as an FYI, less fat that's in a protein, the higher things are on the insulin index. 
And this is why whey protein, which is virtually free of fat, it's very, very concentrated protein, is one of the highest things on the glycemic index. And so if you knew about that, you would always consume protein with more fat. You don't want to cook a burger, for example, that's lean protein. You'd want to have the fattiest uh, meat that you could find if you wanted to keep your insulin as low as possible. And just to give you more information about the glycemic load, I put the video up right here. Check it out.